All right, as we mentioned, President Trump uh, reaching a milestone with the help of uh, Senator McConnell, Leader McConnell, and the Republican senators in the United States Senate. 200 federal judges now on the bench. The latest one yesterday, Corey Wilson, elevated to a seat on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals that's uh, based in New Orleans. This is the first time in 40 years there has not been a single circuit court vacancy. Now, why is filling the federal bench so significant? Joining me now to answer that question is Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn. Senator, welcome back to Washington Watch. I'm delighted to be with you. And yes, you're so correct. We've been hard at work at Judiciary Committee. And Chairman Lindsey Graham, Leader McConnell, uh, the president, we've made it a priority to fill these judicial seats. And so now the circuit court is completely filled, and we're continuing to work through these district court openings. It must be significant because uh, I've seen comments from Democratic senators complaining about the laser focus that Republicans have had on filling these court vacancies. Well, they do complain about it, but they also know that we need to have these slots filled so that the court is working. And, of course, we want to have these slots filled not with activist judges, but with originalists and constitutionalists who realize we are a nation of laws. We abide by the rule of law in this country. And that certainly was uh, driven home last week with, uh, I think it was an aberrant decision by the Supreme Court on redefining the term sex. I think the, the, the American people want judges who simply adhere to the law and provide their role according to the Constitution, which is not to legislate, not to make law, but simply to interpret it according to the Constitution. That is so, so correct. And people will always, uh, when I'm in Tennessee, I will have people that bring up the topic of judges and the fact that the activism by judges or the different interpretations or interpreting something because they think it's a change in the times, that this is something that frustrates people. We have a constitution and we have the rule of law. And if we stick to that and abide by it, then everybody knows what the rules of the game are. And it's not going to be changing it to suit a certain period of time. And that's that's extremely important when you talk about, and I like the analogy, the rules of the game. Because if you're playing a game and someone arbitrarily changes the rules, you get frustrated. And either you, you want to quit or you want to just go ahead and make your own rules up as well. And I think it's very dangerous when you have the highest court in the land changing the rules by redefining words, legislating, which is beyond their capacity from the, according to the Constitution. And, and that frustrates the American people. As you talk about the folks in Tennessee that talk about that. I mean, I hear it all the time from people all across the country. And I think it adds to the lawlessness and the chaos that we see in our country today. Once you start down that slippery slope of saying, because today people think this, and yesterday they thought that, and tomorrow they may think something else, and you look at that situational application, then there is not that constancy. And our founders, our brilliant founders, gave us these documents and gave us this Bill of Rights and gave us this underpinning to point the way. It is a constancy that people can say, if I do this, I will be able to do that. And they know with certainty that that's what the rule of law is built on. So to do these contemporary interpretations or interpretations of convenience is something that is very difficult for our citizenry. Right. And if we want to if we want to change the you know, update it to make it, uh, you know, current with modern definitions, we can do that. It's called the Congress. Uh, it goes through the Congress. The president that signs right. it. That's how we do it. It can be done. Uh, but the fact is the Congress has entertained those ideas of redefining the term sex, and they've refused to do so. 
And here the court took it on. Uh, but I, I, I want to, that's not the focus. I want to focus these judges, and, and I want to go back to the issue that the Democrats are complaining about this. But I find that a little ironic that they would complain about this since they don't want you to do anything else, like vote on legislation. A, a very significant piece of legislation yesterday, I mentioned at the opening of the program, uh, one of your colleagues, Senator Tim Scott, introduced legislation that had the backing of the Republicans and two Democrats that would address the issue of police brutality, which brought about this, uh, you know, the the, the protest, and I'm going to focus on the peaceful protest, but there was other things going on with it as well. Clearly, we all agree what happened with, with the George Floyd was wrong, needed to be addressed. The president's addressed it, and the Senate was moving forward to address it. But it was blocked because the Democrats, and, and, uh, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, these are not my words. Tim Scott went to the floor, who's an African-American, and said, basically, the Democrats don't want this issue to be resolved by Republicans. That is correct. And if your listeners have not listened to Tim's floor speech, I encourage them to listen to that speech. It is one of the great speeches of our time. He did a beautiful job, and he has worked on this issue for years because he has dealt with uh, discrimination. And even as a member of the Senate, uh, he was approached by one of the Capitol Police one day wanting to know where he got the Senate pen from. And he said, I got it when I was sworn in. And, uh, you know, he talks about having been followed in a store and uh, pulled over when because he didn't put his turn signal on quickly enough. So he has lived this. And he said there are things that can be done. Data collection, putting the emphasis on training, building the bridges between communities, and having law enforcement officers that are a part of communities. And Tim's remarks were absolutely just riveting. And he talked about he didn't think it was the content of the bill. It was who brought yeah. the bill forward and that it was a conservative black man that brought this bill forward. And so the Democrats refused to vote to proceed, not to pass the bill. This was to proceed to, have a vote. to a discussion yeah. on the bill. And Tim offered them 20 amendments to the bill. And they would not, under any circumstances, come to the floor and debate police reforms. I, I just I think they should be so ashamed of their conduct, and I hope that we can next week get back on this bill and have a discussion. It, it was an excellent speech. In fact, as I as I read it I, and listened to part of it, it was like this is something that the history books are recorded. And I, I, I want to play a, a clip of uh, just the opening of what he had to say because I thought he set the stage quite well. Play, play the, uh, the second clip we have of Senator Scott. Mr. President, there's a scripture in the Bible in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, somewhere around verse 6. And that scripture talks about a watchman on a wall. And his job is to simply say there's danger coming. Very important job. The watchman's job is to simply say there is danger coming. I had that conversation, as Senator Perdue spoke about, five years ago. I didn't find anyone on the other side willing to engage in that conversation then. And here we are five years later. There is danger coming. I want us to hear this clearly because as we look out in the streets of America and we see more unrest and we see more challenging situations, realize that there is danger coming. The watchman's responsibility is to call out the danger and, if, and when, as the bloodshed happens, the blood, according to Ezekiel, will not be on the hands of the watchman. But if he does not shout out, if he does not articulate that there is danger coming, 
then the blood is on his hands. Mr. President, there is danger coming. We are in dangerous times. The source of this danger is not the failure of this bill on this floor at this time. Nope. This is merely a symptom of the danger that I believe is right in front of us. This is only a symptom of a much deeper issue, a systemic problem. Senator Blackburn, we're out of time, but I want to get your final thoughts on this. Did he get the attention of your colleagues yesterday? My hope is that the Democrats will come back to the table and will see the danger ahead of us and will work with us on police reform. Senator Marsha Blackburn, I want to thank you for your leadership and I want to thank you for joining us today and keep working on those judges. You are doing an outstanding job. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.